filling in for Holly this week. I am Coach Johnny. As you can see, it is a sports theme this week, which is why I, Coach of the Year 2020, have been brought in to do some sports with you. And we've got a great program lined up for you today. You are going to be watching a treat. You're going to be doing some medal making. You're going to be doing some sporting activities with me. We're going to be hearing an amazing Bible story about the greatest victory ever. And we're even going to watch a cup final. A toy cup final starring the main man himself, Mr. Teddy Bear. All that to look forward to. But first, we're going to do some sports. First things first, we've got to get warmed up. So everybody on your feet. And I'm going to lead us in a little warm up. So first off, call me Johnny Wicks. On the spot, we're going to do some jogging. On the spot, do some jogging. Get that heart rate up. Get those muscles going. Knees up. That's it. Next thing we're going to do is some star jumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're we'll watching Joe Wicks. I know what he does. Next thing is we're going to open the gate. Open the gate like that. That's it. It's like my football warm up. This open the gate. Okay. One thing you've got to do, so none of the animals get out, you've got to close the gate, so go back down, stay away, go back down, close the gate. That's it. Next thing we're going to do is touch our toes. So if you stand still like this, try to get down and touch your toes. Right hand, the left foot, left hand, right foot, touch your toes. You can't say it's ridiculous. Oh. 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 That's it. Next one, it's a little bit easier. This one, touch your toes. Try and flick your leg up and touch your toe like that. Touch your toe like that. Touch your toe like that. That's it. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to do some arm rotation. Okay, so nice. You're going to need a little bit of space for this. Otherwise, you might smack your mum or your dad or your brother or your sister in the face. Alright, big arm rotations. Hopefully, you're not too tall that you're smashing any light bulbs. Back the other way like this. Nice, big arm rotations. Okay, should be feeling a little bit warm now. I'm a little bit out of breath. Last thing we're going to do is some stretches. See if we can do this one without falling over. I think all the trick. You put your finger in your opposite ear, it helps you to balance. I've got for you today. We're going to be doing some balls into a bucket. So I've got my buckets here. So what you need to do is go and grab something a little bit like this. You might be able to use a bin. You might be able to use a bucket that you would use for bucketing spade if you've got a, a sand pit outside or anything basically that you can catch balls in. Put my bucket there so you can still see it. If you don't have any balls like this, these are my little boys. Then you could go and grab some paper, fold up some paper, make some balls of paper or tin foil. Uh, what you could do if you haven't got loads like this, get your mom or your brother or sister to throw them back to you so you can keep on going. Because what we're going to do is we're going to see how many balls we can throw in our bucket in 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds. How many balls can you throw in the bucket? I've got the timer. I'll give you a few more seconds to find your equipment and then we'll get cracking. First challenge. Hopefully there should be some contact details that Sean will give you later on. Why not give us an email, send us a Facebook message and tell us how many balls did you manage to throw in the bucket in 30 seconds. Are we ready? I can't hear you. I said, are we ready? Okay, that's more like it. Three, two, one, go! I've lost a second, just putting that in. Oh yes! One, two, three. If it gets a bit easy, you might need to stand a bit further back. Look at this, I'm not missing! Oh, spoke too soon. There's another one in there. We've had half the time, 15 seconds to go! 15 seconds! 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop! Stop, 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 stop. There goes my timer. If I can turn it off. I'm going to count mine up. See if you can count with me. See how many we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen for me. Thirteen. Did anybody beat thirteen? Send us in how many you got, and there may well be a prize that we could deliver to you. Okay, next challenge I've got for us is we're going to do a little quiz to see who knows the most about sports. So I'm going to show you eight sports, and I'm the coach, I'll show you how to do them, and you've got to guess what they are. I'll show you the sport twice, and you've got to guess what sport am I performing, okay? The first one, first one, are you ready? I'll show you, you're guessing. Okay, first one. We've got, that's the first one. I'll show you again. Does anyone know what that sport is? Basketball. Basketball. Well done if you got basketball. Well done if you got basketball. Next one. I'm going to just practice it for you. We'll do one of each thing what they do with this sport. Okay. And the other thing to do is this. Yeah, show you again. There we go. And then, anyone know what that sport is? That's right, it's cricket. Cricket. Well done if you've got cricket. Shows how good my acting skills are. If you're getting them wrong, shows how bad they are. Here we go. Next one, the third one. And then they also do a little bit of this. Woo! That was supposed to be a tackle. Okay, so I'll show you again. Oh. And then, oh. Okay, that was a little bit more difficult. Did you get it? It was rugby. Rugby, that's what I was trying to play anyway, a little bit of rugby. Okay, next one. Hopefully be a little bit easier. Next one. Okay. Second time through. Do you know what this sport is? Did you get it? Tennis. Tennis. Okay, next one. Get that one once more. That one was golf. Golf, if you got that one. Okay, I might even use a little bit of my equipment for this one. Okay. Might be able to see this on the floor here. Look at the stick. Oh! Let's go another one. There we go. What sport is this? Oh! Big clue with the stick there. What do we think that one was? It was hockey. Hockey, that's right. Well done. Two to go, two more. Anyone got full marks yet? Six out of six, two more. What am I playing here? Not as much movement in this sport. I'll show you again. That one was darts, darts. Okay, last one, last one I'm gonna show you. The easiest one, so if you've got none so far, hopefully you can get this one, okay. Show you again. That one was 
football. Give yourselves a round of applause. Very well done. Well, we've just seen me trying to act out some football. And now we are going to watch the real thing. I've got an absolute treat for you. I am the proud coach of the mighty, huge, great team, Toy FC, who play in blue. And we are facing our arch rivals in the cup final, Toy FC, who play in green. We've got the blues against the green. The blues are my team. And it's the cup final. Come on, you blues! It's a packed house here at St Andrews today. Really big crowd, even Mario's here to see the Blues take on the Greens. Let's meet the teams, the Greens, the dogs being in good form, Mr Bumps overcome injuries to be here, the Worm who plays on the wing, we've got the Tortoise not known for his pace, the Gruffalo's been in fine form in goal, and for the Blues we've got the Snake, he's a slippery customer, Dolly always looks the part, the Seal plays better when it rains, Mr Happy, I'll see if he's still smiling at the end, and T-Rex, the fierce goalkeeper, who terrifies opposition strikers. And we're underway, it's not been a particularly fast start to the game, but the coach on the touchline is really trying to encourage his team. It's a chance for the Greens, he shoots, he scores! Oh, the goalkeeper will be disappointed with that, look at the replay, it's went straight through him. 1-0 to the green. Look at the coaches, oh, they're gutted. And the Greens are in again, and Mr. Bum, oh, surely that's a penalty. Yes, it is. That'll be the Tortoise to take it. Well, he's got a really slow run-up, hasn't he? Oh, well, finally, he's about to take it, and he knocks it straight past the goalkeeper. He doesn't move. The coach is really disappointed with that. Well, it's half-time, and they're 2-0 down the Blues. The coach has got a real job on now to try and rally the troops for the second half. And he's given them some very detailed instructions there of what he wants them to do. He's also making a substitution, it looks like. He's bringing on Mr. Teddy Bear. And the snake's coming off. And there's a chance for Teddy Bear. Oh, he's put it past the static Gruffalo into the corner. The coach is delighted. He's hugging the assistant coach. It's 2-1. And here's another chance. The ball comes into the box. Oh, it's headed in. It's 2-2. The crowd are going wild. Have a look at the coach's reaction, he's up and out of his seat, what a great substitution, Teddy's got two. Will there be a winning goal? There's nerves in the dugout, and there's nerves in the crowd. What a game, what a cup final. Here's Teddy Bear again, he has been absolutely incredible, he's brought the team back. Oh, and he's dancing through the defenders, can he finish it? He's knocked it in, it's 3-2! Just look at the celebrations, so much joy! They were 2 0 down, they've brought it back and they've won the game 3 2. All thanks to one player, Mr. Teddy Bear, the hero. Let's hear from the players. Yay! I'm happy! I want to share my victory with my team. Well, it was an incredible victory, wasn't it? At half-time, I thought we were dead and buried. I thought we had no chance, we had no hope. But incredibly, in the second half, what a comeback. What an amazing victory. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. What an incredible game, an incredible comeback. 2-0 down at half-time, and we win 3-2. We look dead and buried. We look like there was no hope. But we brought it back and won. Thanks to Mr. Teddy Bear. What a player. And did you know that the Bible actually has in it an even more amazing victory than that? Would you like to hear about it? Great. Let's listen to the Bible. At the very first Easter, we are told that Jesus was killed on a cross on a Friday. His friends were so sad. They thought their friend and king was defeated. On the Sunday... Some women went to Jesus' tomb where he was buried. On the way, they were wondering, who will move the huge stone that covers the entrance? But when they arrived, they saw that the stone had already been moved. And inside, an angel told them, Jesus isn't here. He has risen. The women went away frightened and confused. But later on, they saw Jesus. He was alive, just as the angel had said. So they rushed off to tell their friends, 
Jesus, who was dead, is now alive. We have seen him. We have just heard in our true story from the Bible that Jesus was killed. It looked like he had been defeated. I mean, he was literally dead and buried. Surely there was no coming back from that. Just like my team at half time were 2 0 down and looked like there was no hope, looked like they were defeated. And Jesus' friends in the story were so sad. They were gutted. Oh, Jesus is dead. They had put their hopes in Jesus, being God's forever king who would be able to bring them eternal life. But now, he's dead. He looks defeated. But, just like my team won an amazing victory to come back and win 3-2, so did Jesus. Although he was dead on the Friday, he came back to life on the Sunday. It's the most amazing victory ever! Beating death once and for all. It's an even greater victory than the 3-2 for the toy team. It's an even greater victory than if England won the World Cup. It's an even greater victory than if Britain won every gold medal at the Olympics. Because Jesus' victory over death is so much bigger, so much better, and so much more important for every single one of us. See, no one in the history of the world has ever beaten death. It was undefeated. But Jesus defeated it. He died and came back to life. And Jesus being alive means that Jesus is God's forever king and our great enemy death has been defeated. And this is good news. This is great news. This is the best news of all. Because one day, every single one of us will die. But the Bible says that anyone who puts their trust, puts their faith in Jesus, can share in his victory over death. On my team, on the blue team, there was one star player, wasn't there? Teddy. He scored all three goals. He was the hero. He won the victory. The rest of us were pretty rubbish. But the whole team got to share in Teddy's victory. And it's like that with Jesus' victory over death. We haven't done anything. But Jesus offers to share his victory with us. He invites us to join his winning team. And Jesus promises when we do, when we trust him and join his team, we too can share in his victory over death. We too will one day be raised and live with him forever in a world where there will be no more sickness, no more crying, no more pain, no more bullying, no more sadness, no more death. Jesus won the greatest victory ever. He was dead and buried, but now he is alive and he promises all who trust him can share in his victory over death and can join his team and live with him forever. We're going to sing a song about Jesus and his great victory. It's called Jesus Number One. And it's got some great opportunities for some air guitar. And it also reminds us that Jesus rose from the grave. He defeated death and he rules the world as king. He is number one. Yeah! Make Jesus number one Jesus is number one Right at the top where he belongs Who he is and what he's done Make Jesus number one He's the Son of God Jesus is number one, yeah He rose from the dead Jesus is number one, yeah He'll rule eternally Jesus is number one, yeah 
supremacy. Jesus number one. Come on in. Jesus is number one. Right at the top where he belongs. Who he is and what he's done. Jesus number one. Jesus is number one. Right at the top where he belongs. Who he is and what he's done. today's craft. So if you want to join in, these are the things that you're going to need. Some cardboard, some sellotape, some scissors, a glue stick, a pen, some tin foil and some ribbon. And then you'll be ready to make your own medal. The first thing we need to do is make a nice round shape. So you can draw around something in your house, maybe a cup. I'm going to draw around a sellotape. So if you take your pen and you draw right around, and you should have a lovely round medal. This is going to be a really big one so that everyone will be able to see it. There you go. And once you've got your circle, you just need to cut it out. Here's one that I cut out earlier. And then all we're going to do is cover that in tin foil so it's lovely and shiny. Let's have a go at doing that. I want to shine a bit on the outside. Put a bit of glue on. Then I'm just going to wrap it up by folding all the edges over. Ta-da! And then all you'll need to do is to stick some ribbon on. So if you turn it over to the back and take your pieces of ribbon, you can use one long piece like I've done with a loop or two shorter pieces that you can tie together them on the back and then all you need to do is put a piece of sellotape on to hold them steady and all I need to do is get someone to tie that around my neck for me looks like I've got two medals now doesn't it if you want to make yours really extra special you can stick some other things on the top so I've cut out a number one here as if I'm the winner remember we've seen that Jesus is number one in our song and in our talk today so what you can do is wrap that up in tin foil and stick it on the top. I'm going to do that now. There's my shiny number one ready to stick on my medal. And if you want, you can decorate your medal a bit more. I've got some little tiny silver balls that I've made from rolling up some tin foil that I'm going to stick around the outside just to make it look extra special. And I've sellotaped it to the front of my medal. I hope you can see that in the light. It's so shiny, isn't it? 
And if you want to, you can put another piece of cardboard on the back just to cover it up so you can wear your medal and it can spin around. It'll really catch people's eyes. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed doing that craft and making your own medal. Please do send me a picture of what you've made and tell me what you would like to win a medal for. Maybe it's for being able to jump the highest or the furthest. Maybe it's for being a brilliant runner or being amazing at riding your bike. I'd love to see a picture. Send it to the email address that will come up here and I'll share it next week with everybody else. Well, when you're wearing your number one medal, remember that Jesus is number one. He got the victory, even though it looked like he was defeated. And that's great news because he shares it with us. So we get to share in his number one place. Isn't that brilliant news for everybody? Well, I hope you enjoyed your craft corner today. See you next week. Bye. Sadly, that's all we've got time for this week at Home Club. I hope you've enjoyed this week's sports theme and learning more about Jesus' great victory over death and how we can share in it. Get in! Thanks for watching. Don't worry, Holly's back. Everything will be back to normal next week. I'm off to try and practice some of my more sports challenges. If you've done any and want to send them in, send them to St Andrew's email or Facebook. Thank you everybody, goodbye!